Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of North Flight Images, and in this video I'm going to ask a question and hopefully get a good answer for it. Have Fujifilm finally got camera tethering right? Bit of context for this. Um, I'm a professional architectural industrial photographer and I do some studio work, I do some macro work, various other things, technical stuff, so electronic components and things like that. But for years I've used a Canon kit and I found the free Canon EOS utility software as excellent. There are better, uh, some aspects for tethering. Some people like Capture One, I don't particularly like Capture One, nor uh, you know, for, for a whole host of reasons, but Fuji provided some software. And I, when I got this GFX 100S um, a year or so ago, the most disappointing bit of moving to it was that it was absolutely hopeless for tethering. Um, now, I did a, a, a podcast the other day with um, Scott, another uh, from Tin House Studios, another uh, commercial photographer here in Leicester who does different stuff to me. But during it, we had this camera um, sitting on the table in front of us and we mentioned tethering and the look both of us gave it and the chuckle we both said is that it's useless. Um, you used to have to be careful about what cable you connected things up. Now, this is a Mac Studio I've got here. Um, and here's GFX and it's working. And here is actual live tethering working. This is new software or updated software from Fuji. I'll go through a quick, uh, some of the features and things of it, but you're really gonna have to experiment with this because there are all sorts of things in it which are potentially useful for different people for different uses and stuff like that. So I'll just give a quick overview of what it is. I say it's free software, it runs for a whole lot of other cameras as well in the Fuji line. So you don't, this isn't just the big medium format stuff, but downloadable and it even suggests that it works with Lightroom. Um, and I can't really test that since I never ever use Lightroom. I really don't like it for a whole host of reasons. I use Photoshop, I use lots of other software, but you'll obviously once again need to have a test and see whether it works for that. I've got it plugged in, USB-C lead here, going actually just, just to try it, I plugged it into the output lead. This is a, um, this is a lightning connected uh, USB 4, lightning connected external drive on this. And I've connected this into the down socket of this. So the USB socket at the back of this is that it's powering the, uh, the camera here. Now, previously, to get this to work, I could only get it to work from one particular socket and various things. I had to turn off the uh, power supply for it. I don't think it's charging because the battery hasn't gone down, but it hasn't stopped working. And it's been on continuously now for an hour or so. So it suggests that USB powering is working along with actual taking shots. What does it do? Well, this is a live view display here. I've got set up with this uh, little plastic car and I'm using, just to make it awkward for it, I'm using a Canon TSE 90, 90 millimeter tilt shift lens. I'm using a couple of extension tubes and I'm using a photodiox adapter uh, from EF to G mount um, electronics. So I've got full control over this lens. I can set the aperture. It's set at F22 at the moment. Why so small? Well, extension tubes. Um, depth of field, once you start using extension tubes to be able to focus close, depth of field gets very, very small. So that's this. But anyway, it's set up, it's there. It's, I've just got this little light here. This is you know, a useful little, uh, uh, battery powered lamp I've got. I've got a review of this. I use this all the time. This is great. I've even used it as a torch and I've got a you know, soft box that will go with it as well. But anyway, it's lighting this little plastic car here. Now I use these for a lot of test stuff. Um, I focused it on that and um, it just works. Um, now, there are a lot of different settings and I have not been through all the settings. I've tried, I've done what I often do with a bit of software, is try and use it without reading the instructions. Um, I used to do usability testing. So I've had a lot of experience of just trying software, but it gives me a good feel for the design of it. And this actually feels as if it's been put together by somebody who does tethered shooting. 
and knows what they want. It has features that aren't in uh, EOS Utility, uh, the, uh, the Canon software, which, which I've used for many years because I, I, I teach the basics of product photography. Part of our business is teaching to other businesses. Now, I do private tuition for, for printing and all stuff like that, you know, lenses like this. But commercially, we also teach businesses to set up their own product photography. And I've often suggested people get basic Canon cameras to start with, DSLRs at the time, now mirrorless, get that to learn the basics of doing it because the software was excellent and it was free and it does all sorts of things. Now, what have we got some of the options on here? Now, I'm going to go through, let's take that there. Now, straight up preferences. There are a huge, great collection of preferences. I've got this set for wired. I haven't tested wireless yet. In general, because I do studio use, I do not often use wireless tethering with things. Um, I prefer the usual reliability of cables. As I said, this, this was ultra picky about cables, about connections, about all things. It isn't here, I've just connected it, it works. Incidentally, I'm running on this Mac here. This software will also run as, on systems as old as Mac OS 10.15. Why so old? Because I've got, sitting over the other side of the office, I've got a perfectly good, powerful Mac Pro with two uh, large monitors connected to it, which is connected to one, a Mac Pro running 10.15. Runs lots of old software. This uh, will replace it at some point, but at the moment this is still doing duty running these two monitors here for, you know, for, for YouTube use. But anyway, back to the preferences. Camera search, I could do, it's got network settings as well. File type for download. Receive actions. What you can do is you can set um, software that will be triggered when so when images come down. Now, I haven't tested this aspect for it, but there's all sorts of stuff that you could, you could connect to it. Um, histogram types, screen, I've got it set as a gray background. You can have a black background if you're darker gray, if you like. That, was, that doesn't seem to make much difference there. And a whole host of camera shortcuts. Things like exposure compensation, uh, zooming, all sorts of keyboard so shortcuts, and you can customize them. So anyway, that's a whole lot of preferences and there, there are stacks of them. There are that many that some of them I thought, what is that? Now, if it covers preferences that I haven't even discovered. Now, I, I don't use, uh, I'm quite specific in the kind of use I have for a camera like this. As I said, I'm an architectural industrial photographer. So there are many features there that I would probably never have had much cause to use. Now. Looking at the basics here, we have histogram. Looks good. Um, let's just run through some of these. A, a navigator. I can zoom at this point. So I can actually set the zoom level and I've zoomed right in. I can move the focus here and I've got, and I can see just how small that depth of field is. I can actually move the camera and sharpen something up. There we go. Uh, we're talking very small depth of field. So anyway, that's that. Take the zoom back. We're back to full frame there. Now, I can have this, I can do a zoom at the top. I could set it to 35 mil crop mode. So if I'm using something like my MPE65 macro lens or some of the other macro lenses I've got uh, that may not have the field coverage to the image circle for something the size of the sensor in this, I can use it with that. So I can set, there's, there's all little icons at the top. I say this is, it's easy to use, but there's an awful lot in it. Um, I'm just looking at some of the settings and stuff. And um, yeah, I'm going to have to investigate it properly. But the key is I was able to just download it, set it up and start to take pictures. And that's always a good sign uh, from my point of view for when I'm doing looking at software. Uh, it has an interesting assist tool so that you can put an overlay on it. You can put guidelines on, and there's some yellow guidelines appeared on it there, but I can overlay an existing image. So if you're using, doing product photography or doing certain other stuff, and you want to make sure your subject is set up exactly as it was for a previous picture, what you can do is this. Now this has got uh, a picture of a little green car I took earlier, in fact, this one here, and that has appeared as an overlay. And I can see that the 
alignment is quite different. Of course, yes, I've moved things. You know, I don't normally do stuff like this. I have quite a precise setup for macro stuff and close up work. But anyway, that allows me an overlay. I can adjust aspects of the overlay. I can uh, alter it. I can even move, tilt, rotate the uh, overlay. As well. So that's a useful one for that. Automated shooting, uh, focus bracketing, and interval timer, so you can use it for interval timing uh, shooting, and it's got exposure bracketing as well. Now, all of these sorts of things, many of them would be better if this was a proper Fuji lens, um, if I wanted to try autofocus on it. But this is just, I wanted to use this just to make it that little bit more difficult and actually closer to the sort of kit I might actually use. So we've got various settings, image quality settings. Um, you can, all the usual adjustments you can make on this for image quality. This is applied to the JPEGs, by the way, not to the, uh, not to the RAW files. And... I can see that it's set for super fine and raw. So it's J raw and JPEG it's set for. So that's set for that. Uh, autofocus, manual focus settings. Obviously this is fully manual focus here, sliding things backwards and forwards. Face detect, all the bits and pieces. So everything that the camera does is there. Uh, shooting settings, uh, metering. I can have IS mode, so I can have the IS on. Um, I can have 35, I can change here to 35 mil mode. So I can just go to that and suddenly we've zoomed in and it's, you can see the crop, it's now 35 mil mode. Put it back, we're back to that. Now, the TSE 90 here is a tilt shift lens, 90 millimeter. It works, this is a treat on this camera. Uh, it has more than enough image circle to work on this camera. Works with these tubes. Um, this lens dates back to 1992. Um, this particular one is sometime later than that, but um, you know you can use old lenses like this perfectly well. And I can have seven. It's causing no problems whatsoever. So that's that. We've got some setup where you can you can change aspects of the camera settings. You can even format card if you like. You can decide date time. All the usual camera settings can be controlled for this, and. We have image, in fact, I can even set copyright notes. So if I want to put some comment information that goes onto every picture here, so if I'm using this for, yes, for a particular job, I can enter it here. There's settings down the bottom here with all the camera settings. So I can see that it's set at a 50th of a second, uh, 3200 ISO F22, um, and that's, you know, to get that. To take a picture, there is a button at the bottom. And there we go, I've just taken a picture. Uh, that's in live view mode there. And there's the image that I just took. You can see I move this and nothing's happening there. There is that image I just took. Let's move that back. So there we have it. Uh, there's the basics of it. There is probably far more to try and discover in this. Um, it looks good. And thank you, Fuji, for producing some software so that my scoffing at the capabilities, the tethered capabilities of this is no longer true, it would say. I've not used it for a job yet, and you just downloaded it yesterday just to test it, but it runs on this. It will run on old stuff as well. Uh, if you want to explore tethering, if you've got a Fuji camera here, give it a go. It's free. Uh, have a play, but you probably want to have a read of the manual. Anyway, I hope that's of some interest and I hope it helps some people find useful stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, this is uh, coming back to some more stuff I've got to connected with the cameras here uh, that I'll be looking into. And um, yeah, it's it's the battery has not gone flat. Um, so, yes, the power is working. So I've got tethered powered feed. Uh, that's good. So. There you go. Thanks very much. Bye.